Hello everybody, welcome to the Speakeasy. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. <laughs> you gonna make it? I think I'll be alright. What are we... We're doing a whiskey review oh. from a local distillery. Uh, Stonebreaker. This is uh, from the uh, Restless Spirits Distillery in Kansas City. Also, this was a gift from my friend Roman, so shout out to you. You're awesome. <laughs> Free whiskey is always good whiskey. So this is a uh, blend of a four-year-old Irish whiskey and some of, it's imported, and some of their own uh, double distilled malt. Nice. So they sourced the Irish whiskey. Uh, did you find out where from? Uh, Ireland. <laughs> No, I didn't. Thanks, I didn't. good buddy. Look at the uh, camera. <laughs> uh, uh, it's okay, because I actually already know the answer. Oh, good. It's tea link. Oh, okay. Oh, we talked about that. Yes. Yes, we did. And the only reason I know that is because Daniel on the Whiskey Vault is way better at research than me. <laughs> and yeah, evidently him. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. So, um... This was, it's a really, really new company. They were established in 2016 by Benet and Michael Shannon. And their ancestors came over from Ireland in 50, 1853, fleeing their famine. And then in 1867, the family moved to Kansas City, which is, I think, don't think that they've left, considering they're still here. But I don't know. And then, little, little kind of fun thing. In uh, 65, Clarence Shannon Sr. developed uh, the oxygen tanks used on the Apollo spacecrafts. Hmm. Yeah. And they have a really cool... Custom built uh, 500 gallon pot still. Boy, that'd be tough to take. Yeah, I remember seeing the, the video that, that we watched over it. It looked pretty neat. It's the only it's one like. like... It's got like a weird bulb on the top, which is abnormal for those. Yeah, it's uh, onion, onion shaped. That's, yeah, those. It's I don't know why I'm looking down at my next video right up, but whatever. Eight. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the only one like that on the planet. Yeah. So, they have a whiskey that I really want to try that's a, that's a single malt called Gully Town. Uh-huh. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about Gully Town. Now, did you just notice the guy on the back of the label? I've only ever seen the front of the label, bro. Well, now you have. Uh, it's really cool. Have seen both sides. Yeah, there's a little, uh, a dude with a, basically a hammer that's got a barrel on top of it. So. Their, their website's pretty cool. Uh, what? I believe they're a master distiller. You speak kindergarten teacher as well. They have a whole lot on their master distiller. Roman got to meet them, I believe. Oh, that's cool. She is a woman, though. Yes, she is a woman. She is not on the fence, evidently. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, on the nose, I get almost exclusively Irish whiskey. It reminds me a lot of uh, Sexton in particular because it's got some pepperiness mm -hmm. in there. Not sure what I would call it. And then surprisingly, um, considering it's a single malt that they mixed into this, on the taste, I get a bit, little bit of that, that eucalyptus flavor. Hmm. Not just a touch, not like a dominant note. Mostly getting the malt. Yeah. Hmm. It's... It, you can taste that it's two things mixed that are not alike. Because mm. I can definitely pick out the regular notes from Irish whiskey, like that, that uh, buttery, like, Pillsbury Doughboy biscuit. No. Mm. Uh... Well, using the uh, their own 
just malted whiskey. It should be what's the, I guess I should have probably found the mash bill on their whiskeys, but I know the one is just malted barley. The stuff uh, yeah. they make. Probably because it's called a single malt. Go figure. Um, I will say that the marrying of flavors I actually am not the biggest fan of. I've had their Sons of Aaron, which I know we haven't reviewed. Is it good? Um, yes, I like it quite a bit. And I would venture out to say I like it more than this. And that's that's kind of what I taste. I taste all the things I like <laughs> about Sons of Aaron, and so it, it hits my brain, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then I get these other tastes, and I'm just like, who fucked up my whiskey? <laughs> Um, it tastes, I do get a little bit of a, a younger, um, yeah, it's like, thin. Well, yeah, mixed in with the, the good solid Irish notes, um, but other than that, it, the little bit of youngness to it, I like it. Yeah, um, there's notes that I like. But I do not think that the two notes mesh well. If I try to focus and only pull the one side or the other, I like what I'm getting, but then I also notice the other side's notes, and they kind of drive me nuts. And so it confuses me. Like, when I drank this whiskey, I drank probably a solid two or three ounces, and I still couldn't tell you whether I liked it or not. It was really weird. Uh, this is a whiskey that I would drink. It is probably not a whiskey I would buy myself, knowing that I can get their Sons of Aaron. Uh, and I do want to try Gully Town, because that's like their highest rated whiskey, but I know I like Sons of Aaron better than this one. So, I haven't tried the Sons of Aaron this is the only thing from them I've tried. I have seen uh, their the Builder's Gin. Mm -hmm. the and bars. Gin. Yeah, at uh, uh, at least one bar, maybe two. <clears throat> yeah, I do hope that they get to experiment more and get more widespread. I like the way they do things. And I think they're Sons of Aaron whiskey, even though it's uh, obviously sourced, is a really good whiskey. I think this would do well to sit in a barrel, maybe mix, because I'm guessing they're, they're using the same whiskey they're putting in the Sons of Aaron yes. for this. I think what they did was they mixed Sons of Aaron and Gully Town. Okay. If you want me to be honest. Well, maybe they should mix those together in one of the Sons of Aaron barrels, or I guess either barrel, and just kind of let that... I guess they might already do that, but do it longer. Just let it kind of sit and chill out for a couple years. Yeah, they or so. might. They might have that coming, like a like a Stonebreaker Ten or something. That would be cool. Yeah, that I think would fix the clashing notes. Mm -hmm. I think if it was given more time to age, those notes would round off and marry a lot better. So that. I didn't think about that until you said it just now, but I think that would fix my, like, primary issue with this particular whiskey. This is something, however, because I wouldn't pair an Irish whiskey with a Maduro cigar. Uh-huh. It's, it's, the Maduros it's a pairing kind of like my Uncle Jerry and Aunt Susie. Uh-huh. They're about as polar opposite as you can get. Yeah. Uh, which can work in the right circumstance. But here, I would pair this one with a Maduro, because the peppery notes that I pull out of this, the, the stronger non-Irish notes, mm -hmm. I think would pair with a Maduro cigar very well. Yeah. And then you would also still get those sweet Irish notes, and you probably notice those more with the pepperiness of the cigar, because they cancel each other out. I think those would complement each other really well. I can see that. Wish I had a Maduro try. Yeah. Like that uh, American from last week? Yeah, or the uh, Triple Maduro. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Some Camachos would be neat. Uh, I'm going to give this whiskey a six. It's higher than I thought you were going to give it? 
well, here was my thought process. I would rate Henry McKenna at a solid five. It's a drinkable whiskey, but I would never buy it myself. Mm -hmm. But if that was what I was presented and that was my only option, I wouldn't pass it up. Okay. And that's kind of my benchmark. Well, we're wrapping up anyway. We'll just talk a little louder. And I would drink this over that, given the choice. Gotcha. So, I had to give it a solid six. How about you? Uh, I was going to say uh, seven. Seven-ish. Yeah, because I know you said you liked it considerably more than I did. I didn't want to give it a full eight. But mm -hmm. this, this, these half things are getting out of hand. Yes. So, even though now it's going to be a six and a half. Do you want to make it a six and three quarters? <laughs> no. Uh, so, I, I'd give it a seven, but on like a higher side of seven, leaning more towards an eight. Yeah. Uh, I think if you made this a ten-year-old whiskey, if you married these, and then you aged them even in a new oak cask, mm -hmm. uh, or an old bourbon cask, that you could get from one of the other distilleries in the area, that it would fix any issues I have with this whiskey. And it would take it into a, like the range of a solid eight for me as well. Okay. Until so. we see you again, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop us a comment, and check out our uh, Facebook page for daily updates.